Yes, it's a new Porsche 911, and though the exterior might be reassuring familiar, it's underneath where this latest 911 GTS changes entirely, because this is the first hybrid Porsche 911. And that means underneath it's got some electric wizardry, which Porsche says adds to the performance of this car while enhancing and lowering its emissions. So, should this be a sports car that you need to consider as your next pick? Well, we've come out to Spain in typically not Spanish weather, to see whether or not this new hybrid Porsche is worth looking at. So let's get behind the wheel and see what it's got to offer. This latest Porsche 911 GTS, dubbed 992.2, looks, well, pretty much like the old 911, really. There are some upgrades to be found on this GTS model. You might notice at the front, the lower area of the grille looks a little bit different to before. And that's because it's got active aerodynamics in it, with those flaps opening and closing depending on what type of driving you're doing. It can close off entirely to boost aerodynamic efficiency and help the 911 cut through the air even more efficiently. And they'll also close when it's raining so that all the wet and the grit doesn't fling through the innards of the car. Overall, it's still a great design, but as we've come to expect from Porsche, it's not all that groundbreaking. So this latest 911 represents a reasonable facelift over the standard 992, but it's not groundbreaking. It's just some subtle changes here and there to help things feel a little bit more forward and a little bit more technology heavy than they were before. So ahead we've got a large new screen, which is similar to the ones that you find in the Taycan. And that's making it easier to see those primary dials ahead of you, though it feels like it's lost some of the traditional feel that you got in the old 992 because it still had some physical binnacles, which I always thought looked quite good. In the centre, we've got a big infotainment system as well with Apple CarPlay and all of your usual connectivity functions. And underneath, you've got these quick fire toggle buttons for aspects such as the suspension and the exhaust. Obviously, you want an exhaust button nice and close to you. Down here you've got independent controls for the heating and the ventilation and I've always thought those are really good because they're nice and easy to use on the fly. I'm just not a big fan, as I always say in most cars, of this gloss black plastic as around these edges it just feels a little bit flimsy and not very Porsche really. On this convertible model, buttons for the roof down here and then a large prominent cup holder and actually there are quite a few places to put water bottles and let's be honest when you're driving with the roof down it's usually going to be sunny and you want to have plenty of water. It all feels very well finished and there are lots of nice materials used throughout. I just feel like with the addition of that screen although it is slightly more usable it just doesn't feel as warm or classic as the old Porsche used to. It's still a very nice place to be though. So, what's going on with this latest hybrid 911 GTS? Let's get into the nitty gritty. It's all based around a 3.6 litre turbocharged boxer engine slung out the back, exactly where you'd expect it to be on a 911. But, it's the assistance that's going on besides the engine which makes this car important and relevant to the hybridisation that we're expecting across the board in the motoring landscape. So the turbocharger, that is electrically assisted. It's powered by a battery which is housed up front in the nose and it means that the turbocharger spools up faster and it's more responsive when you apply the throttle. There is also an electric motor housed within the 8-speed PDK automatic gearbox and that in itself adds 54 brake horsepower. So there is some assistance power-wise coming from all of this electrification. Overall, we're getting 534 brake horsepower, and that's 60 bhp more than you would have got from the old GTS. And this is all for a weight of 50 kilograms more than the previous car. There's quite a lot of numbers going on, I will admit, and there's quite a lot of data to take in with this latest car. But at the bones of it, it doesn't act like a plug-in hybrid. Porsche were quite clear they didn't want a plug-in hybrid setup in this car because it would have made it too heavy. But as a result, this GTS can't really travel for any distance on electric only. It's still just being used to assist the engine rather than give it the electrification and that ability to send electric power to the wheels alone. So this really is primarily a combustion engine car which happens to have some electrification added to it. Zero to 60 miles an hour is gonna take around three seconds so it is incredibly rapid and Porsche claims that you could get around 21 mpg. So for all of this talk of hybridness, I wouldn't say it's really about efficiency. It's definitely more to do with performance. As I've thought with my time with this car, what's the point? Why go to the effort of 
putting in an electrification system if all it's doing is adding a little bit more power and not really aiding efficiency whatsoever? Well, I think it's a way of Porsche slowly introducing this system into the 911 range. It's not going, right, 911s are electric now, that's all it is. We're ripping up the rule book and we're changing everything entirely. It's bringing this system in ever so slightly and just so that we can get used to the idea. I think it's quite quite a clever and subtle way of doing it. So what is this latest GTS like to drive? Well, you might remember we drove the previous generation GTS not too long ago at Motors, and I feel that despite all of its hybridization in this new one, it feels largely the same. The turbocharger is still quite noticeable. When you step on the gas, you're getting quite a big surge of boost, and you can hear the turbocharge whistle behind you and it's all quite exciting but it's still noticeably turbocharged the responsiveness is great but it's still got that deep well of torque that comes with a turbocharged motor and i don't think that's a bad thing entirely it's nice and snappy to your inputs on the throttle but there's so much roll on torque that you feel like you could almost have just two gears it would be quite happy with first and second gear and then you just leave it there and drive it around because there's so much torque that you could just lean it and it just pulls in any gear. Body control is excellent, and you can't really notice those 50 extra kilograms. It's not really too much. I feel like if I had a particularly large breakfast, I could probably feel it more, to be honest with you. This one is the Carrera 4, so we've got four-wheel drive, and on these dry roads, we're getting loads of grip, loads of traction through the bend, and the front end feels nice and sharp too. One thing I would say is that we're in the Cabriolet version right now, and despite having a cloth roof, it's still very quiet even when you're traveling at speed. You've got a nice level of engine noise coming through, but it's not drony, it's not uncomfortable. I don't think this is gonna be a car that you're gonna to struggle to drive long distances. As with other Porsche models, I wish the gear shift paddles were just a little bit longer. They always feel quite stubby, and I just wish that you had a little bit extra because sometimes when you're turning, you can find that you just lost a little bit of paddle age. You need a little bit more, but that's one of a very small list of niggles with this car. We've got adjustable dampers as well via Porsche's PDCC system and you can make them harder or softer depending on your specific driving style by toggling the switch ahead of you. I always like them in my soft setting. The roads here in Spain are usually quite smooth so you could go for the firmer one but I just prefer to have a little bit of roll ever so slightly, particularly in a road car, because it gives you a better idea of what the road itself is doing. It means you don't spring over and get sent off in the wrong direction. Remember that the base Carrera is still gonna have a standard three liter boxer turbocharged engine without a hybrid system. So if you don't fancy a little bit of that extra weight or you don't want the hybrid system, then there's still gonna be an option Particularly in the 911 range, the base Carrera is traditionally one of the sweetest cars to drive. Not saying that this is by any stretch of the imagination a bad car to drive, but it's quite often the case that that lighter car feels a little bit more engaging overall. The integration of a hybrid system into this latest 911 could have sparked fear in the hearts of enthusiasts the world over, but I don't think there's much reason to panic. This has been done in a very gradual way. It's certainly not up to the grade of a full plug-in hybrid and it's nowhere near a fully electric car. But what I do feel is that it's Porsche's way of getting us used to the idea of a hybrid 911. It's not so drastically different from the old GTS. It's not able to do a kind of electric range that you'd expect from a plug-in hybrid and it's nowhere near even a, a regular hybrid in terms of the amount of electrification it brings. But what I feel it's doing is allowing people to imagine the idea of a hybrid 911 and get used to that proposal. It's safe to say that this latest 911 is still just as good as it always was, but the introduction of a hybrid motor brings some added electrification to the party and helps to bring this car slightly more into the future than before. Thank you for watching this Motors new car review on the latest Porsche 911 GTS. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, leave us a like underneath and let us know in the comment section if you'd be happy with a new hybrid 911. And since you're here, please remember to subscribe to the Motors YouTube channel. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get a notification each time we upload a new video.